Hello F11 members and welcome to the first Fundamentals of Post-Production video tutorials for 2016. We're working on the tutorials for issue 49, the uh, February 2016 edition. So what I want to do with you is take you to Australia, to the Murchison River Gorge to be precise in Kalbari National Park and talk you through how this picture in front of me came together. I'm particularly pleased with this picture because I think in many ways it sums up all that that part of Australia is all about. The ancient layers of rock here, the wonderful river gorge, that Australian light, quite hard, harsh and contrasty, but so, so different an environment to be in, to say, working here in wet, damp Europe, particularly this time of year. Now, uh, this is quite a tricky picture to process, uh, so some interesting things to talk about this month. Okay, so let's just uh, go back to where I started with this image, but before I do, I'll just mention to you that this image features, and the shoot behind it, the story behind it, how it all came together, features in this month's Behind the Lens feature and also in the video blog. So it all integrates beautifully. Okay, so this is the finished article here we're looking at in Photoshop, panoramic image. Now I'm going to take you back into Lightroom to where it started, or rather where the processing started. And uh, I have in front of me the images that the raws straight out of the camera that I'm going to need to work with. What I did for this image is I took, uh, basically, I shot the, the frames to be merged into a panorama using my 24mm tilt, tilt shift lens. So if we look at this frame, for example, here, just go to there. That is with the TSE lens, with it racked to the left as far as it will go. I then basically came into the middle, uh, and then I came in to the right. Uh, and instead of rotating the camera, I'm using the shift lens to move left and right to create the overlapping images that I need to make a panorama with. But additionally to that, what I did was, because of the high contrast situation, I shot, let's work it out, one, two, three, four, sorry, three overlapping images of each frame to be merged into panorama uh, first uh, before merging into a panorama. Do you get me? I have done these three exposures ranging from the middle exposure to underexposed to overexposed there for each left, right and center. And so first what I'm going to do is exposure merge the images and then I'm going to come back and merge the merged pictures to make a panorama. Sounds complicated, doesn't it? But once we get going, I think it'll all come together. So let's start with the images on the left, okay? I always start with the, with, when I'm making a panorama, rotating from left to right, because that way the images appear in Lightroom the way they will be stitched together as a panorama. So let's just take these three images here, and I'm not gonna do anything to them. I'm just gonna highlight them there. And essentially now, if I go up to here, up top, right up the top toolbar here, if I go photo, and then there's a drop down menu, it says photo merge, and it says HDR, two letters that I absolutely hate. But what we're actually going to do is exposure merge this to create uh, a DNG, a digital negative file, using Lightroom's exposure merge capability. Now, there's very, a little bit of movement in the image when I was exposing due to the 
the clouds here in the frame. So I've selected here the medium um, de-ghost amount so that hopefully Lightroom will take care of any kind of uh, ghosting effects through the slight movement of the clouds in the intervening time as I was exposing my three frames. Okay, it's going to take a couple of minutes. I'm doing this in live time here and I've got auto tone and auto align clicked on there um, and we just wait for Lightroom to do its stuff and of course because I'm using big images here I'm used shooting with the Canon 5DSR uh, each image is a 50 megapixel image so it takes a while to piece it together but that's the first one there and now all I would do is click on merge to make that picture happen but before I do that actually what I can do is just click that de-ghost overlay on and off and that would show to me if there were any uh, problems with merging the images due to uh, motion but actually there's nothing there so that's fine so I'm just gonna click on merge and I'll catch up with you when that merge is then done okay so now what I have here is the this image here you can see if I highlight that now it's a DNG an HDR DNG and, ex and Lightroom has exposed those three varying exposures from over to under exposure to give me an image here that does a pretty good job of recording all the tones in the scene. It's just a starting point. We'll get, we are going to work on it. And yes, I have got some problems here with vignetting because I'm at the maximum left shift of the lens and using a polarizer. And I'm just getting a bit of vignetting creeping in there in the top left corner. But for now, I'm not worried about that. We'll deal with that later. So I'm going to move on now to expose to merging the three frames in the middle. The middle exposure, the underexposure, and the overexposure. Okay, uh, and again, I'm going to go up top here where it says photo in the top toolbar, out of your video frame, I'm afraid, but um, you'll see it there. If you go right to the top toolbar, click on photo in the Lightroom toolbar, down to photo merge, and go to HDR helps if I actually highlight the three that I need exposing in the first place, doesn't it? Okay, go to that, just highlight those three now. Go back up there, photo, photo merge, HDR, and it comes back up with my HDR preview uh, as it did before. And again, I've got my medium uh, de-ghost amount selected. Just going to pause that while it's doing it and come back to you when I've done my merge. Okay, so this is the image uh, from the middle part of the frame that Lightroom has uh, chosen, uh, has merged together, the three exposures. And now I'm going to do the same for the three on the right. Here we are. Middle exposure, underexposure, overexposure with this frame here. And again, highlight them three I want to merge go up top toolbar photo photo merge and HDR and up comes the HDR merge preview again just by the way just to illustrate if I click on the de-ghost amount and click on none it'll do it much quicker but of course uh, if there's any movement in the frame then there could be problems with the merge Again, to save time here, I'm not going to make you sit through it as it stews on this picture. It's taken me about, generally, about a minute to do these uh, these exposure merges using Lightroom with these 50 megapixel images. So now there is the third merged image, merged from the three uh, ex exposures over middle and under. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is stitch the three images that we've merged 
exposure merged, uh, make them into a panorama. And so it's this one, it's this one, and it's this one. So if I essentially now select those images, one, two, three, there, and now if I go up to photo and photo merge, but this time select panorama, up it comes with my panorama merge preview window. And one thing to look at here, I have basically rely on Lightroom to auto select the projection. I find it a very, I, I never have yet gone wrong, having had that box ticked. Um, and also I'm getting it to auto crop. Now one thing about that, it will mark crops that it thinks are logical, but they're not etched in stone. When we come to actually look at the uh, panoramic merge later, <laughs> uh, unable to merge. Let me just uh, go back and uh, check what's wrong there, and I'll come right back to you. I had actually selected the wrong three images there, uh, which caused that problem, which is uh, actually when I'm talking to you and doing it at the same time, that's how sometimes I get a bit confused. Uh, I hope you'll pardon me there, but um, these things happen. Uh, with all of this, it really does take care to actually just step back and consider what you're doing. Here again, here comes the panorama preview now. So I'm just going to pause that while it's doing it, well, rather than making you wait. We'll come back when we've got something to look at. So there's the preview of the panorama, and uh, looks fine, doesn't it? Uh, I'm completely happy with how it's going to do that. As I mentioned before, having the auto crop on is not uh, actually committing us to doing anything. It's not going to throw away the uh, any information there. It will still be there if we choose to modify the crop. Okay. So I'd now click on merge, and I'll come back to you when I've got the finished, uh, not the finished, but the, the the merged panorama to look at. It's only a starting point. Okay, see you in a minute. So this is the merged panorama, and it's pretty good, isn't it? Um, but of course, it's no way yet the finished product. I want to actually work now on this image selectively, bringing in some of the brighter areas and retrieving some of the darker areas as well, and also dealing with this ugly vignetting top left. Nevertheless, I think that's all a job for part two of this video tutorials for this month. So we'll see you back in Photoshop in part two.